This is the 2023 Mitsubishi Expander Cross, and Mitsubishi has updated this vehicle for the 2023 model year. It is simply just a facelift, and it's not a full model change, but it looks better than ever. Take a look at your grille right here, and it looks bolder than before. There's a lot of these gloss black trim on it. You even get a full skid plate just to give it more of that SUV-like look. You get an all-LED affair for your lighting, so you get LED DRLs, LED headlamps, and also LED fog lights. First question is, what exactly is the ground clearance of the Expander Cross? Is it more than the regular Expander? Well, no. They both share the same 225 millimeters of ground clearance, so you can kind of think of this as simply a cosmetic addition. Speaking of those cosmetic additions, so you get lots of these moldings, you get over fenders, you get 17-inch rims, and you also get chrome on your wing mirrors. For the rear, it's not as SUV looking as the front and the sides, but I would really say that I'm starting to like the look of the Expander Cross, well, compared to before that is. You also get these really nice half T-shaped tail lamps. You get a faux diffuser right here, and you even get a spoiler effect and a shark fin antenna. Now, unfortunately, you still do not get a power tailgate, but this is pretty normal in its class. If you have the third row seats up, you can still fit a couple of soft bags right here. But if you do fold them down, you get tons of space in this one. And you can also fold down the second row seats. So with all those upgrades and changes on the exterior, do we get a different powertrain? Well, no. This is still the same 1.5 liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder gasoline engine making 104.5 horsepower and 141 newton meters of torque, still also paired to that four-speed automatic transmission. In the city, you can do around eight and a half kilometers per liter in pretty heavy traffic, that is, and about 14 kilometers per liter on the highway. Now we check out the interior of the expanded cross, but first, the door thud? It's just, just about okay. Anyway, inside here, well, you do get so much hard touch plastics. I mean, the dashboard here on the side and even here on the center, but that's about normal for pretty much every single car in its class. So it is forgivable, but at least Mitsubishi did give in some soft touch materials right here. So also by the dashboard, there's this like slightly blue hue also here on the side and even on this center armrest, it is all kind of soft, not super soft. But the biggest change right here is your steering wheel and instrument cluster because instead of having the slightly different steering wheel compared to the previous generation Expander and Expander Cross, they gave you something totally different. So this is the steering wheel taken straight out of the Mitsubishi Montero Sport, also leather wrapped too, and it also tilts and telescopes, which is really, really good. The digital instrument cluster also taken straight out of the Montero with three configurable modes. Towards the center, you have this touchscreen, pretty responsive it's about okay and it also has a pretty decent reverse camera you also get apple carplay and android auto what i'm not a big fan of with the expander cross is the air vents so despite the update they didn't really update the air vents they still feel very flimsy and your ac system although it is digital it's not automatic climate control so this is all still just manual digital but it is better than knobs right move further down below you have a regular shifter with even an overdrive mode you have an electronic parking brake also with auto hold and this is also one of the biggest change you can only get this with the mitsubishi expander cross you can't even get this in the expander gls you get leather seats right but my biggest problem with it despite having pretty okay leather it has zero lumbar support. It is just so flat right here. Kind of really annoying. Now, for other features, you get ABS, you get stability control, and you also get two airbags. Now, here at the back, door thud check first. It sounds a little bit better than the front, but you know, overall not exactly great. Anyway, back here you get tons of space, both for legroom as well as headroom. But when it comes to the width of the car, despite having a not too tall transmission tunnel by the center, the hump by the center, well, the car isn't exactly the widest, so it still is best reserved for two people. But at least right here you do get a folding center armrest with two cup holders. You also get a USB-A port and a USB-C port. And you even get some of these map pockets, including pockets to put your phone. Also, I just want to talk about the ingress and egress of this vehicle. It isn't too high because once again, your ground clearance is only around 225 millimeters. So even if you have like the elderly people coming in here and riding this, or if you have to fit child seats, you're not going to struggle. The doors also open pretty wide. 
Now for the third row seats, we already expect space to be at a premium and that is indeed the case right here. I barely have any legroom left and I have just about enough headroom. But don't forget that you can easily ask the second row passengers to just kindly slide your seats a little bit forward. And once they do that, well, you're gonna have more than enough space right here even for really, really long journeys. And for your toys right here, well, you barely have any, but you do get a cup holder on either side and there's also a 12 volt outlet. So driving the Mitsubishi Expander Cross and surprise, surprise, it feels exactly the same as driving a regular Mitsubishi Expander, especially if you do get the GLS trim because, well, they didn't change anything in the powertrain. So you still have more than enough power, even if you have seven people on board. But the problem here really is the transmission. I've said this with the Mitsubishi Expander GLS before and you still use that four-speed transmission, which feels vastly outdated. Much of its competitors, especially those new models nowadays such as the Hyundai Stargazer and the Honda BRV, they're already using a CVT and that well it just feels much more modern. The problem with this car is that well if you're in the city okay no worries four speed is more than enough but when you're going on the highway it gives you this feeling of wanting an additional gear once you hit the speed limit of around 100 kilometers per hour tends to rev a little bit high already so yeah I could wish they could have at least added one additional gear if not just given us a CVT transmission but for the rest of the highway driving experience it's not bad because NVH in this vehicle is also not bad noise wise you get a little bit of tire noise and wind noise once you're reaching around 80 or 70 kilometers per hour but uh, for the size and shape of this vehicle it's about par for its class Vibrations, you're gonna feel a little bit of it when you are idling, but also not too bad. And harshness is pretty excellent because it's a really comfort-oriented vehicle, so all the suspension setup is just tuned for a very comfortable ride. This is one of those cars with truly excellent visibility because you don't really have side or curtain airbags. And all around, you really, even at the back and even with that reverse camera, it's just so easy to maneuver this vehicle. It's so easy to park. Couple that with your incredibly light electric electronic uh, power system steering. And this car is a breeze to drive despite the size of a compact MPV. In the handling department though, you don't really expect a 7-seater compact MPV to handle well. And yes, that is true with the Mitsubishi Expander because once you do push this car pretty fast over bends and corners, well, you tend to feel a lot of that body roll. And couple that with your comfort-tuned suspension, which is really soft shocks. And you have a recipe for not too great over corners. But it is an MPV after all, and you're not really supposed to expect an MPV to drive drive well or dynamically. So we've already seen what the Mitsubishi Expander Cross has and what it can do. But what about its price? Well, this car right here costs 1,328,000 pesos or 130,000 pesos more compared to even the top of the line regular Expander GLS. Is it worth paying 130,000 pesos more for some body kits, the steering wheel and digital instrument cluster from a Montero Sport and the same ground clearance? Well, that is up to you to decide. So comment down below if you think this car is worth it. But price aside, I can easily say that this car right here may not be the most blinged out out there nor the most fun to drive, but it easily satisfies what a seven-seater compact MPV is supposed to do, which is to transport you and six other family members comfortably.